This stuff is brutal, you guys. See if I can get you a shot here. Trying to show you the difference between the protected zone and the non-protected zone here. Oops. So, even though I don't like this composition, it's got its issues. It's a pretty incredible stuff. So here's the video. It was actually a high temperature refractory glue. And you guys really liked that video. Um, and I get questions every day. And I said I would do a follow up on this. So essentially we did a bunch of oxyhydrogen torch testing, which is one of the most brutal flames alive. And um, it held up pretty well in these tests. But when it comes down to the chemistry of it all, this is what happens, and this is why I won't be using it anymore. So essentially what happens when the limestone is heated in the presence of oxygen, it converts in to calcium oxide, which has an extremely high melting point. Now that right there does make a very powerful refractory fire shield, but when that calcium oxide comes into contact with moisture, it reacts endothermically creating calcium hydroxide and it expands in volume 75 percent which destroys any artifact you may have constructed of this material or if it's a coating it will flake off the walls so now the calcium hydroxide when it comes in contact with water and sand and other materials and co2 from the air it will convert back into a concrete or the limestone once again so it's it's a good one-time use high-powered fire shield but that's not what we're looking at in this this video in the background here this is a refractory paint that i made from some potassium silicate water glass and i'm going to show you guys how to make in this video but i just wanted to get back touch base on the limestone video because it's just not usable it, it goes through this chemical process that reacts with moisture in the air so that's kind of what kills it if you can keep it dry it's amazing stuff all right but i want to shut it we're off not doing the limestone around here anymore before this torch blows up as you can see it's nice and red hot all the way through and through So is this protecting the metal from oxidation? Right here we got 80 grams of potassium hydroxide and 120 grams of sodium silicate, silica gel beads, I guess I should say. And we're gonna add 800 milliliters of water to this. I've made this stuff enough to realize that if you go any lower on that ratio, you end up with a goopy material that solidifies in storage, and we don't want that. So, all right, that's my little wind block right there. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil this stuff down till when I pick it up, I can like swizzle some material off the top of this. Okay, we've reached the point we want to reach. See how the top is kind of clinging together now? I don't know if you can see that. The top has sort of this sticking together action. We're going to go ahead and dump this into a glass container real quick and check its volume. I set it on top of my other experiment here because this stuff is so hot, I didn't want to melt the bottle. So this water ought to gingerly cool it. 
I'm doing a submersion curing on some refractory castable artifacts for maximum performance. Okay, so this is what we came up with. I made two batches, but this is the ratio of what's in here right now. And um, this makes our potassium silicate. And you can use this stuff for casting, mixing it. This is some of the, uh, the sand molds that I made a while back. And this stuff is extremely tough. You would mix it 3% by weight, just, just enough to make sand castles out of it, basically. That's how the consistency should feel. It's kind of wet a little bit, but just barely. And um, this stuff can be cured with CO2 or just air dry. But to make that batch, I essentially just repeated this twice. And if you don't use this much water, it won't boil down. It won't absorb all the material. And if you boil it down past the point that I showed you, this is what happens to it if you boil it down past what I showed you. So you can't store it. You can't really use that again like that. This ratio right here will keep indefinitely. All right, we're gonna to attempt to make a quick fire patch. You can see how much of that black sand I put in there. That's a black abrasive blasting media. And we're gonna to top that off with some water glass. All right, so here it is. It's got some massive holes where there shouldn't be. And it's pretty much to the point where it's almost ready for a new cup, but we ain't gonna do all that. All right. I'm worried I might have covered the igniter. Let's hope that didn't happen. I know I did, but I mean, there may be some other areas of it that are exposed here. So it may have a hard start situation. I've been going for about 10 minutes and it looks really good. I don't think it's gonna have any trouble. So we'll let's just go ahead and do a full cycle. All right. So that was two and a half hour campaign and the repair held up raspy but Let's see what it feels like it's hot in here so dude it's solid as a rock that is hard as rock So the coating I'm making right now was tested on these drill bits. I did my best to rub it off with a wire brush and most of it was simply colored the color of the stainless steel. I didn't want to rub it off of there. Look at that. Look at how tough that coating is. I rubbed as hard as I could. You can see the scratch marks from the brushes. Some of that is just discolored coating. Be able to make that out. You can see right there, there's a spot that's been removed. There we go. So this is an extremely robust refractory coating. It doesn't work out so great for the thinner metals so far, but I have another idea of a use for this stuff. It's called welding backer. Sometimes when you're welding stainless steel, the back side of the stainless steel just gets all burnt up. So we're going to take a look at that tonight. If you're making this stuff because you want to make sand cores and stuff like that, here's an old sand core mold. And this thing is as hard as a tombstone. Here's the sprue and the runner. This stuff is exceptionally hard. So I just mixed uh, like 3% with the sand and you make you can make some real nice cores and some real nice molds that can be a CO2, uh, CO2 cured rapidly if you uh, find yourself in a situation where you need that or if you just need a mold that's a little bit stronger than your average mold. This stuff's pretty tough. I just did that to kind of give you a demo that it's not a fire brick replacement, but 
when it comes to just molds, it is pretty 